Welcome back to F1 Report everyone. It's race week once again and it's another special one this week. We visit Turkey for the first time since 2011 due to our coronavirus hit schedule of course and this race marks our final European race of the season. The Turkish Grand Prix was first run in 2005 so it's kind of a newish track compared to some. It ran from 2005 to 2011 and quickly became a fan favourite mainly thanks to its fast paced racing and the incident packed races of course. It was removed from the calendar due to costs back in 2012 with the race needing 14 million dollars in state funding which it didn't get so it fell off the calendar. The track itself is long and fast. The current track record is 1 minute and 24 seconds which I imagine will be smashed by this new generation of cars. Turn 8 is particularly iconic, up there with the very best for sure. It's one long flat out turn with multiple kinks that test both the drivers and the cars to their limit. There will be a lot of sore necks after this one. We also have two DRS zones at the track, so plenty of overtaking zones. One is down the start finish straight as per usual, and the other is actually on the back straight leading through turn 11 and down into turn 12. Only a tight three corners separate the two DRS zones, so I would expect a lot of people to get very close and fight for almost the entire third sector. The weather for this weekend seems typically questionable for this time of year, lots of clouds and a moderate chance of light scattered showers on both Saturday and Sunday. It's going to be pretty cool race once again around the 15 degrees Celsius mark so plenty of tyre warming needed. Another thing that means plenty of tyre warming is needed is that Pirelli will be bringing the hardest compound tyres the C1, C2 and C3. The reason for this is that the track as you can imagine is pretty hard on those tyres Although there's still plenty of speculation how the race will play out as this generation of car has never gone around the track and it's also just been re-asphalted very recently so it's probably going to be a little slippy out there. In terms of experience we have four gents on the grid that have raced here previously in F1. You can probably guess that one is Kimi Raikkonen because he's been around forever. He actually won the first race back in 2005 you know. Lewis Hamilton is another one who's both raced and won here. He got his win back in 2010. And Sebastian Vettel is the third man to both race and win here. He got his win back in 2011 when it was the last time we raced here. The remaining man and the only driver out of the four not to win the race is actually Sergio Perez. Is it just me or is anyone else getting the feeling that we should be betting on him to win this one? Let's recap something a bit more recent than those though. Our last race was at Imola and I'll quickly go over our top 10 from that race, followed by the two championship tables. So let's dive in. Our race winner from Imola was Hamilton, who also claimed the point for the fastest lap. Second was Bottas, who ensured Mercedes were crown constructors champions for the seventh time in a row. Ricardo grabbed another third position and another podium for Renault. Kvyat was fourth, Leclerc 5th, Perez 6th, Sainz 7th, Norris 8th, Raikkonen 9th and Giovinazzi in 10th. A double point score for Alfa Romeo, I still can't believe it. In the drivers championship there isn't a lot of movement in the top 10, Hamilton is still top with 282 points, Bottas is still second with 197 points, Verstappen keeps his 162 points. Ricardo increases his hold on 4th place with 95 points. Leclerc is still in 5th with 85 points. Perez in 6th with 82 points. Then we have a little gap back to Norris in 7th with 69 points. Followed by the only man to make a move in the top 10 and his teammate, Carlos Sainz. He's moved up to 65 points. Albon slips down to 9th after not scoring, he's still on 64 points. And a similar situation for Gasly in 10th. Without a score, he stays on 63 points. In the constructor standings, we now have our champions Mercedes, so I've given them a little crown. They're on 479 points. Comfortable in second are Red Bull on 226 points. 
We have a new third place team. It's Renault on 135 points. Very, very closely followed by both McLaren and Racing Point on 134 points. It's so incredibly close. Behind them is Ferrari in sixth on 103 points. Then we have Alpha Tauri on 89 points. A long way back from them is Alfa Romeo, up to 8 points after their double score. Haas are still on 3 points, and Williams still on 0. That's the table sorted, so let's talk news coming into the weekend. And of course, the main news is almost certainly surrounding the Drivers' Championship. This weekend is Hamilton's first chance at securing the title. All he has to do is beat his teammate. Another piece of news actually doesn't have any bearing on this weekend or even the season. This week, the provisional race calendar for 2021 was released. I made a full news video covering that, so if you're interested, I'll put a link somewhere on screen. There's also still a lot of speculation surrounding open seats for next year, so expect plenty of questions from the media for the likes of Albon, Guviet, Grosjean and Magnussen about where they will be next year. But that's it, pretty slow news week on all honesty. But that just leaves my driver and team to watch. So I'm probably going to go with what's a very obvious option as my driver to watch. I'm going to pick Lewis Hamilton. He has that chance to win the title as I said previously, so I want to keep an eye on him to see if he can make it happen. My team to watch is going to be racing point this week. It feels like in the last couple of races, Renault have been the team gunning for third and they've finally taken it from Racing Point, who have held it for so long. So I want to see if Racing Point can get fired up this week and take it back. Are you guys looking forward to going back to Turkey? Is there anything about the race that excites you? Let me know in the comments and I'll catch you in the next one.